Welcome back to another episode of Ren's Wasteland Camp Review slash Dumpster Fires of the Commonwealth. So, what have I been doing? I've been sick. Like, grade A, 100%, allergies going crazy, because the weather in the location that I live in has shifted from, uh, well, basically it went from summer to a couple days of fall to pretty much going to winter time pretty, pretty rapidly. Um... So my sinuses and other issues are starting to act up. It's kind of standard procedure for this time of year, to be honest. Let's take a look around and see what we've got on the server. We will need to expand this out so we have some people to go visit. Um, how about we go over here to our first person, which is Zayoi 9251's camp. Not too far away. So yeah, this region is getting like uh, weird weather snaps. Oh, nice. So they have all of their, looks like their vending and stuff out here on the outside. And they have some decent plans if you need them. I'm not going to buy anything. Not that there's not stuff that I don't need, but just there's not stuff that I'm willing to pay for on this character. They made a couple weird choices in that they are using garden tiles here, which I understand if you are... Well, that worked well. I wasn't sure it was going to based on how it's set up. Sometimes when you have... Uh, two workbenches set close together like this, it'll make one completely unfunctional. Um, don't know if you guys have ran into that or not, but it is something that does occur. I can't tell if this is a complete camp or one they're working on. I'm going to guess it's probably complete based on the plantings. And this is probably just like their farm that they need for, you know whatever they're growing I would say this is probably an adhesive farm because you have easy access to the water and you have plenty of uh, corn down there and you have all this other stuff up here set up um, kind of surprised they don't have the if it is an adhesive farm I'm kind of surprised they don't have the uh, uh, what do you call it out um, fertilizer grenade generator looks kind of like a mixer you can get it in game anyway so I just camps on a scale of 1 to 10 um, giving them a rating based on how much well if you have a bathroom you get one point if you use a prefab you get a point if you um, do something cool I rate you higher than if you didn't and in this case this is basically just a greenhouse which is not particularly cool or uncool to be honest it's functional it does what it's supposed to do um so on my scale this camp would only rate about a uh, it's just it's a four at best i mean the only cool thing they've got is they brought a death claw over here which doesn't normally spawn in this area as a camp uh, ally. And I always give extra points for people that do that. It's a good, you know, good pet to get if you can tame one. They tend to be able to make it all the way to your location. I've had friends that have tamed uh, everything from dogs to cats. And dogs and cats just don't live as long. Uh, my alert kings are another one that's really good if you need something with durability um, they seem to do really well and the other thing you need to know if you have a pet like this and if you go to your map and you move from region to region right like say you move down here to the ash heap death claws that are set to spawn in this location have a higher level value than ones that spawn in the forest so if you move there you'll get a higher level one if you move down here you'll get another one 
and so forth. It all depends on, you know, where your camp placement is as to what the death clause level is when he finally gets here. Um, it can also lead to death clause being things like chameleon or uh, albinos or matriarchs or, you know, whatever. It, it, it can change. It can literally change from location to location. So keep that in mind whenever you do build one of these things. All right. Um, so this one ranks a four. I'm going to jump down here to Fumble Squid's Camp, and we'll check it out next. Hopefully it doesn't disappear before we get there. That's the one problem that I have with doing these kind of things. The, uh, the way the game world is set up, if the camp decides to despawn sometimes it will just go ahead and chuck you right out in the middle of nothing well, this is a different location I usually see people build up on top of the ridge there not usually down here this is pretty much a guaranteed fight but it does have a free water supply And they set it up to fight. I mean, it's a... Got its turrets and they built it out of steel versus building it out of anything else. I don't know if I like the... The, uh... Dumpster on top of the telephone pole? That's kind of... Iffy. A few crops down here. By the way, if you're going to build one of these camps, this is kind of pointless. Because it's just something to have to repair. Most of their workroom is on this level. Power's up here. Grandma's at the top. Core charger's up here. I mean, this place is just literally meant for farming, I think. Yep. I would say that's what its intent is, just to farm the location and test out a battle camp. Nice piece. Um, again, it's a functional camp. It does exactly what it's supposed to do on a scale of 1 to 10. It's going to read about a 5. Like I said, if you're going to build one of these things, um, don't bother with crops at the bottom. Because crops are just something you have to repair, and 90% of the time you don't have materials to actively repair them whenever you have to use a repair feature. So if you do put crops in one, put it up towards the center mass, up about midway up, so that you can, you know, actively protect it a little better. But I would just say don't use crops in a build like this, to be honest. You know, funnily enough, the ones down there never get broken. It's the ones up there. The I should probably the... just put them inside, but Yeah, yeah, I was thinking what I was thinking is put them up in the middle of the uh in the actual middle in like a Yeah, I should probably just put them inside the house. Oh, also, yeah. the main reason why I have this here is I like being near a script machine. That's pretty <laughs> much it. And this is one of the least popular areas. This this is highly put a true. Base near a script machine. This is highly true. Nobody builds like like I said. Most people build up on the ridge there. They hardly ever build down here at all. Yep, pretty much. Yeah, because there's an enemy spawn. That's why all these turrets are here. Is because the oh, fucking yeah. enemies spawn over there, and that's why I have all this stuff around here. Because then oh, the enemies get stuck at the bottom of the base. There's a. Uh, I saw one person build inside this house. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I yeah, like they that. they glitched a piano into the door. That's cool. And then they built inside and framed out their walls on the interior and made it a shell That's very inside. Smart. Oh yeah, I didn't but... even know you could do that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a it's a little bit of a pain to do, but it works really well whenever you do it. Um, I want to say their name is Rika Wolf. They might even have a video online about it if you want to check it out. Hmm. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's a, 
it's a nice build. I mean, it's a good area. The only thing that I don't like about building here is with the new, um, what do you call it? Creatures like the turtle and the werewolf looking thing. The turtle will yeah. spawn right those, freaking here. <laughs> those two are the reason why I have all these foundation pieces is because they're indestructible. Like, oh, yeah. That's it. It's yeah. just the turtle and the werewolf. Yep. I get it. Because these turrets, by the way, I had to turn them off. They do not fucking aggro when enemies are shooting at them or the base. But when you turn them off, they don't get damaged for some reason. Right. I don't know. It, that's why I probably just don't even need the turrets. I just rely on the concrete wall. I think that the... Uh, uh, actually, I think the problem is like because they're up so high, they don't necessarily register the stuff that's on the ground. Maybe. I Obviously, I don't want to put them on the ground because I don't want melee enemies blowing them up. Right, right. I get you. But you might be able to stick one down here on the inside of this. Yeah, true. And test I'll try it. try that at some point. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that's what it is because I think it has to do with their height versus ground height. Well, the weird thing is, so when I aggro an enemy, like when I tag one, yeah. the turrets all wake up and shoot it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's because... Yeah. So like it's all tied to I, you i guess i really wish there was like two different modes on them like passive and active or something but that requires bethesda doing something oh yeah bethesda is really bad at coding in repairs for th well i mean if you played starfield you understand what i mean by that i still haven't gotten around <laughs> yeah i've avoided it's it because i've got i've got friends that have literally told me that the bugs that are in this are in that Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all the same engine spanning back to Morrowinds. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, the creation engine was just Gamebryo, and I think it used to be called something, for, like, before that, too. Oh, yeah. It might even be older than Morrowind. Probably is. But, uh... Like, the actual code base and stuff is the same. Like, it even still uses ESPs and ESMs under the hood and everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's all, it's all the same shit. They, uh, they didn't do us any favors whenever they made it, let's put it that way. <laughs> nope. but... I mean, okay, honestly, props to the coders who made this game, because the idea that they could cludge an MMO and netcode into Fallout 4 is amazing. Oh, yeah. The fact that this game works as well as it does is a small miracle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that and the, uh. Well, I mean, like, the guys that, well, they started working on this, and I don't know if you remember a mod that was coming out for Skyrim called Skyrim Together. Yeah, I still I still want to play that with one of my friends. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the way it works, the way it used to work is you download a copy of it to one of you would have to download it and host it on your machine, and then the other one would be able to log into that world. And, uh... You had to match mod loads outs and everything else to make it work, and it was kind of glitchy. Um, they've got it to the point now where you should be able to actually run a game and be able to do missions together, but there's still some nice. glitchiness to it. It's kind of like it doesn't have the the polish that this has where it will let you... Um, it doesn't always work where you do the same objective and you get the same rewards oh, kind of thing. It doesn't like sync up. Correctly. Yeah, every once in a okay. while it'll glitch out a little bit in that regard. So if that's you're... honestly something I've been impressed with this game of like the lack of quests glitching out because that's always been a problem in Bethesda games. I have had quests glitch out in this game, but it's been a few years since I had that issue. I mean, like permanently. Like it used to be. Oh yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> Like, it used to be, like, you pretty much... I couldn't imagine playing, say, Fallout 3, New Vegas, etc. without having access to the console. Like, because no. you'd normally... If you were on, like... If you were on the console, um, you'd have to, like, load hours ago saves because a quest glitched. But if you're on PC, you can just type some commands. But I've never had to do that in this game. Obviously, because you can't load a save, but the True. fact that things don't get, like, baked into your save file and you're fucked, no. like, they did a good job in that regard. I had one quest in this game that wouldn't let me advance on one of my characters, 
and it wound up being um, something stupid. Like I would, like I missed a part of a quest that I was supposed to find that they moved, and in one of the updates. But it's that uh, the one where you get the fixer. Oh, that one, yeah. Yeah, because they move shit around for it, and like whenever they first did it, it didn't, it wasn't all working the way it was supposed to. But after a couple weeks, they and patches, they fixed it without an issue, and now it works fine. Oh, it just good. has slightly different crap. But yeah, it's different stuff. I mean, but anyway, I'm running around looking at can. What is your care? What is your name? Oh, fumble squids. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh. I do I'm guessing a... you're streaming. No, I record for a YouTube channel that I have. Oh, and what okay. I do is I that go around sense. and I check out camps and I rate them on a scale of 1 to 10 for creativity and, you know, build quality and that kind of stuff. This is my alt account. My main account, um, I've been getting a lot of, like, really weird uh, friend requests from people that have watched my channel. <laughs> So, nice <laughs> so so i started using my alt account to do it um makes sense but uh yeah one of the guys i, I was like butt gas that was his name so i was just <laughs> like nice name <laughs> i was just like shit oh no <laughs> i got butt gas after me exactly but uh, there was one guy that I reviewed his camp, and it was called I Poop 24-7. That, <laughs> that was his name. <laughs> and I, honest to God, it was the funniest camp I've been to in forever. That's funny. But, yeah. I, All right. I, well, have fun. Anyway, dude, um, nice camp. Um, yeah, move your plants inside. It'll help you out a lot. Yeah, I really should. They honestly... Once I turn the turrets off, they haven't been getting destroyed. I There's some weird aggro or something going on with this game. Yeah, yeah. Well, the turrets will fire in on their your own stuff. I've noticed that, too. Oh, I mean, that's not a problem. But it's like enemies shooting through the base to hit the plants on the other side, believe it or not. Yeah, I believe it. I can, like, totally, I can totally believe I it. I think it happens when the base is, like, loading in, like, where all the walls haven't loaded in, but you see all the plants and turrets floating in the air while enemies are shooting at it. Yeah. Yeah, I gotcha. Whenever the, uh, before all of the hitboxes load in yeah, for all of your build. Cool. Yeah. That makes sense, too. Oh, dude. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's not a bad little battle turret place. Battle yeah, camp. Don't worry, I don't care if you rated it five out of ten. I really nah, don't I, mind. <laughs> I rate believe it or not, I rated it a four out of ten because of the usefulness of it. I have like certain criteria I go for for camps. But yeah. I give points anyway. I give points for people using things like uh you know, putting a bathroom in their house. Oh, like RP stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. more RP type stuff. That makes stuff. sense. Yeah, this isn't like exactly an RP base. I prob I've been meaning to do that kind of shit, but of course my ape brain is like, ooh, event, go to that. Ooh, it, like just go farm Scorch holiday now. Yeah, well, I wind so up it's... doing a lot of that stuff whenever I'm doing uh, when they have the build challenges in the. Uh... Oh yeah. Because, you know, build 25 walls or build 10 walls or something like that. That's when I wind up doing that kind of crap. Makes sense. Because, yeah. I'm getting to the point where I don't play this as much as I used to anymore. So, you know how it right. goes. Well, have fun making your video. <laughs> you too, man. Have fun uh, keeping this place up and running. I uh, All it takes is one bad spawn, <laughs> I guess. Uh, okay. Let's go up to Rivo Flavis. And we'll call it a day.
All right. So here we are at Ribo Flavinator's camp. Okay, so they've been playing for a while. You can tell this right here is from the original um, uh, scoreboard. This tree is either from the original one or the second one. I don't remember which. But they've been playing for quite a bit. It looks like they have fully embraced the Halloween theme. From pumpkins on their thing to pumpkin colored turrets. To a witch out here in a cauldron. Which that's a good little merge by the way. If you don't use merges very often. That's one that I recommend. Um, they built their own little shop. Let's see if they decorated it up with anything good. And they're selling a bunch of costumes for Halloween, which is kind of what I did at one of my camps. None of their prices are too bad. It's, like I said, just a little shop. It's got a little bit of everything on display. From masks to musical instruments to hats. It's not bad at all. By the way, these are floor decor items. The Tesla balls. I guess is what they would be considered. Lava lamp looking things. Let me get one point. Two points. Okay, and Grandma lives here. Alright. Take a quick peek at the outside. Nicely done. Some... Halloween pumpkins sitting out here, growing in the sun. A little bit of a crypt back here. Nicely decorated all around. I rate every camp on a scale of 1 to 10. I don't like that one roof tile, but I understand why they did it. Um, and this camp here, I'm going to go ahead and give a good solid 6 to. They even got some merges where they got some stuff going down into the stone here. Nice. Very nicely done. I even like the Welcome to Flatwood sign being right here, which I'm pretty sure is here all the time. And they didn't have to do anything with that. But we do have one in-game that you can place yourself, which I've used quite frequently. So with that, we'll call this one done. Um... Enjoy your game. Play anything that you like. Probably going to start a new series on the channel. It's going to be uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Um, starting soon, hopefully, or possibly a uh, Baldur's Gate 3 series, which could be fun in and of itself. We will see. You guys have a good time, have a fun, enjoy the game.